what is it that Venus wants? And it's anything but work. Venus has nothing to do with morality and responsibility. Venus has to do with pleasure, what, what feels pleasurable. And that's really important when we think about Venus. This podcast episode is brought to you by Astrologer Connect, your premier source for quality astrology readings. Hi there, welcome to your weekly astrological weather. I'm Jamie McGee, an author and astrologer and one of the hosts here at the Astrology Hub podcast platform. I'm so grateful that you have joined this weekly worldwide astrological conversation. Now, if you're new here to our channel, I definitely want to send you a warm welcome. Please make sure that you remember to hit that like and subscribe button there at the bottom, the notification bell, that'll let you know when we are live so we can connect again. All right, so today we will be exploring the astrological influences for the week of June 5th through the 11th with our very special guest, Astrologer Connect, Astrologer Elodie St. Onge Abu. Now, I am a huge fan of Elodie. She's absolutely amazing. If you have not met her yet, Elodie is a French-Canadian astrologer residing in Newfoundland. Beautiful home there. She writes a horoscope for a mountain astrologer. Her practice focuses on research, divination, teaching, astro, astronomy, and healing modalities. I love reading your writings every month, Elodie. You are simply a brilliant writer. And I'm so excited to do the weekly weather with you here today. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Beautiful. All right. So this is a, a pretty interesting week. It's one of those ones I've been kind of watching. Kind of like, like the tide is going to turn a little bit. What would you say your overall theme is or what planet has your the most focus for you this week? I got my eyes on Venus. So yeah, I think there's big Venus vibes coming through. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. I think we've all been kind of waiting for her transition because she's moving into Leo. So how would you summarize Venus and Leo? Because it's going to be a long stay, right? She's going to be there for like four months because of her. Yeah, four and a half months, 18 weeks. I would say that it's it's very glamorous because we're talking about the fire signs, you know, Venus and a fire sign. I think it's Liz Green. I don't know if you're familiar with her, but she she said basically Venus and Leo has trails of mythos behind her. There's something bigger than life with Venus and Leo. And I think we're going to get, we're going to get that this summer. And so we're getting a little taste of it this week. Bigger than life. You can't beat that with Leo because it's just like the spotlight. Even if you're a shy Leo, you cannot hide when you have like a strong Leo energy. And Venus, I think is going to bring out a lot of Leo this summer. I love it. Yes. All right. So it's, um, so the overarching thing we have this week is Leo, Venus vibes. We're just super excited about what Venus is going to do. Is there any other transits that we want to talk about about this week, kind of bring into the overall theme that we have? Yeah, so, well, we're going to be just on the other side of the full moon. And so we're heading towards the last quarter moon, which takes place by the end of the week. And then the other uh, big theme will be Pluto, because as Venus enters Leo, she meets Pluto at the gate. <laughs> and then we also have Pluto stationing retrograde the next weekend on Saturday. Okay, yeah. It's a lot of big energies to work with all at the same yep. time. Every time I think of like Pluto and Venus together, I always think of like this, maybe this is the writer in me. I think of this like epic, like deep, like passionate romance thing, something you can't kind of get past. So I feel like we're going to have a lot of like heart-based energies come up and yeah, Pluto likes to put that on the table and say, you know, what, what do you want to do with this? How, how are you going to activate this energy? So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So we we know that Venus is moving into Leo. and But the thing about this, do you feel like Venus, what are some other signs that Venus will be highlighting when she's in Leo? So it's going to be a lot of the fire signs, right? That it's going to get this natural flow from Leo. Venus, right? Yeah, I think that, well, Venus will highlight Taurus too, because Venus rules Taurus and we have Jupiter and Taurus right now. And Jupiter rules Saturn, traditionally Saturn and Pisces. So, you know, whatever is happening in Taurus has a lot of say, but that Venus will be ruling everything that is in Taurus and it's forming a square, a whole sign square. So, yes, yeah, she's she accentuates the fire signs, but I, I think she's also going to accentuate everything that's happening in Taurus. Oh, I love that. 
So a good thing to do, like if you know what your birth chart is or you know your chart is kind of dial into that is to look at the Taurus house, the Leo house, any of your fire signs. Because even if you're not one of these signs, you're definitely going to feel this in an area of your life as you work with this week's energy. So we have Venus moving into Leo. We have Venus. The, one of the first things she does, she has a conversation with Pluto. We're finishing up this full moon. Is there any other highlights that you want to talk about before we kind of go day by day and, and see where this juicy energy is going to be at? Well, I wanted to break down a little bit just uh, what Venus is before we get into the forecast, because we talk about Venus. We're like, oh, I love beauty and all of this, you know, but just maybe break it down a, a little bit more just so that we can spot what's happening. Because I've seen a lot of conversation around Venus, not necessarily directly, but people can maybe recognize it that is happening in their life. And it can be anything from fashion, from self-work from value but i think in leo it has a lot to do also with the courage the courage to go into these into your desire into what you love into these and i'm sure i'm sure this is going to get covered more extensively but i think it's important to kind of just like open up like what is it that venus wants and it's anything but work venus has nothing to do with morality and responsibility venus has to do with pleasure, what what feels pleasurable. And that's really important when we think about Venus. And I just want to specify that because we get really prescriptive with astrology. And Venus is not about prescription. It's not about homework. It's about really leaning into what feels good. Yeah. So it's I like, just want to say that. I love that you brought that in because it is something that I think I think it depends on your culture and where you live and maybe even your age or your environment. But one thing that I I have found personally that gets overlooked, especially when we're busy, is that, you know, that self-care. Like, what do I need? And we've gone through a really, it's almost like we've had five years packed into the last six months because it's been a really busy beginning of the year. And it's been a lot of outgoing energy. How much, what can I do for others? How do I close this? How do I bring this in? And we have, it's almost like our cups are completely empty. And this, I love that. And we talked a little bit backstage and Elodie was talking about how Venus is really going to help kind of bring that energy back to you to fill in your cup. Like, what do you need to take care of you? And I think that's a little different for everybody. Sometimes taking care of you is reading a book. Sometimes it's working out. Sometimes it's doing absolutely nothing. It's like you said, anything that makes you feel good mentally, physically, and emotionally. So it was very much a a me time. Now, do you think that I would love to know in the comments if that would make you feel guilty or excited? Because I know sometimes and maybe it's the mom and me or the, like the dog mom, the human mom, all those moms that feels like super guilty, like, oh, no, I'm, I'm taking this time for myself. Um, is that bad or is that good? Um, but I would love to know in the comments if you feel guilty when you take me time or if you're like, no, it's all about it. That like I'm the priority. Would you say that that is a necessary concept as we work with Venus over the next couple of months? Like, absolutely. But I think it's going to get easier. I think we're maybe this week, you know, we're going to see that transition. We're going to talk about it. But I do think the whole point of Venus being in Leo for so long is this, this ability to lean into pleasure, to lean into joy, because the sign of Leo also relates to joy and the heart. So I do think it, we're we're going to naturally move towards these things. And I think it's it's just a beautiful opp opportunity for that. I think so, too. And I don't know if you've experienced this on the new platform with Astrologer Connect, but I know some of the clients that I've been working with, I've been really watching like this Leo house, because if you think about it, over the last two and a half years, that's been super stressed because yep. the the access of the eclipses that we just went through and we've been going through have been squaring the Leo house and then Saturn was opposing it. So this self-awareness, like how do I take care of myself? How do I really nourish this most authentic Leo vibe in my chart has been under stress because the past exactly. and, the future, and Saturn was like, don't you dare take a misstep. So one of the things that I've been working on with my clients is like, okay, this is going to be a little bit of a release. And I'm, I really would I encourage everyone to, you know, take a moment because I feel like there might be this impression and it may not come in right this week because, you know, astrology is a little bit of a haze, like a sunset or a sunrise, but it's almost like it's going to be like, well, if I didn't go through that, I wouldn't be here. Like it's that savory treat after, after going through an experience like, man, if I hadn't climbed that mountain, I wouldn't have had this view kind of thing. 
So I do like wherever, like if you know your chart. Have you been feeling that with your clients? Have you been working on? Absolutely. Yeah. But I think that's you, you voice what Saturn does. And Saturn was in the opposite sign of Leo. And that's what Saturn does. It, it kind of restricts the flow. But once the flow comes back, it comes full on. And I think, you know, Leo was the missing leg on the table in the last two years. It was the only place that had no transits happening, it was, but it was very confined and that individual self-expression, everything Leo and your chart was constricted, but Saturn brought these lessons and clarity and integration. So I, I do think like what you've expressed is, is the lessons of Saturn also. Yeah. It's the reward. And I always watch yeah. that when Saturn like leaves a certain area, you find that treasure in that transit or the trigger in the treasure because he does like when you work with Saturn, you do get the reward. It's like you feel that release like, oh, my gosh, like I have accomplished this in one way or the other. But it is kind of like that, like especially being a fixed sign, you know, like that Leo energy, like if, even if you're not a Leo, you have a fixed area in your chart. And to not know how to self-express or feel like I have to wait for the other shoe to drop to understand, you know, am I leaving? Am I going? You know, how do I express myself? What is my reflection in the other person? Um, well, that's one of the things that I've been looking forward to, though, with this this transit. And there will be some adjustments because, you know, we know I, I'm sure we'll talk about it in coming weeks, but Venus will go into a retrograde. So we're going to kind of go yeah. full onto this. And like, you know, right when you get comfortable, you may have to make adjustments. But Venus adjusting is looking for more more pleasure right venus is gonna say okay wait a minute like we may need to recess or you know go more be more expressive with it but yeah i love it so i'm, I'm really excited about this week i'm excited to see how we kind of like get into each of these days too is there anything you want to add before we go to the days no i'm ready you're ready all right if you're yeah. ready I'm ready. okay so today this is the day right it's on monday we should be yeah. vibes okay so let's yeah talk about so monday june Fifth, well, Venus enters Leo in the morning here on the East Coast. So I don't know if you know the times, but, you know, Venus enters here. It will be 11 in Newfoundland, but I think it's going to be like 9.30 a.m. So listen, the, the week starts with Venus entering Leo and the moon entering Capricorn. I do think there's a little bit of something about status, like being status conscious, because Venus in Leo is... It's aware of its reflection of like, okay, where do I stand? Who am I? Am I on good ground? Am I special? Are people validating me? Obviously, this is going to be a long process because Venus is here for a long time and it's just the first day. But with the moon in Capricorn, I, I find the moon in Capricorn is willing to work for the material world, you know, for, for, okay, what am I doing? What's long term plan and all this? So there's a bit of a sort of, situating yourself in terms of okay okay where what's my status here and i'm not saying like just status like in society gen generally but just like what what kind of ground am i standing am i being you know uh rewarded for for my work am i being recognized all of these things i find there's a bit of that theme on on monday but I do think it's productive overall because the moon in Capricorn forms a uh, trine with the planets in Taurus and trines are supportive and there's a lot of things happening in Taurus and it's an earth sign too. So we get this excess of earth on Monday and it's just, it's, it's productive. It's the material world, maybe a little bit of how you appear, maybe a little bit self-conscious in terms of like, okay, you know, am I standing on good ground? Is my image good? Something like that. It's a really good reality check with that energy too. It's almost like you get like the results of something or you see the status and you're like, okay, well, where do I go from here? So I think, you know, today, if you find that you feel like you have a pleasant surprise, like if you're uplifted in some way, kind of nourish that. And if you feel like any kind of letdown, because sometimes those reality checks would be like, wow, I really thought that this was, this was my dance floor, but then you're going to figure out, well, no, there's a better one over here. So I think every no is going to lead you to a yes with this Capricorn energy. But I, I like you. I agree. I, li I love how Capricorn helps you really get motivated to take action on material matters or things that are going to really build a strong system or structure and, and an empire for your little Leo crown that you're going to need to wear. So is yeah. there anything what do you want to talk about for Monday too? Monday, well, um, yeah, so Venus, as Venus enters, this is 
this is a big one because as Venus enters Leo, she opposes Pluto right at the gate. Pluto is in Aquarius, but is preparing to go back into Capricorn by the end of the week. So we have this, this amazing Venusian vibe, but I do think it's exaggerated because Pluto, whatever aspect Pluto is doing, and this is an opposition, it will exaggerate these Venusian qualities. So again, maybe something around power, something around authenticity. And I do think that this themes, these themes will come again when Venus stations retrograde in July. Because the sun will be opposing Pluto. Pluto will be squaring the nose at that point. So we see these like Venusian Pluto themes. They're going to continue playing out. What it is, you know, it can be a lot of things. I actually have observed in my own practice, Venus Pluto people are often midwives. Uh, My mother is a midwife and I did a study and they all have Venus Pluto aspect. What do they do? They assist people through very, very intense experience. So it's not necessarily this like obsessive, manipulative sort of function that people attribute Pluto to. I think there can be this, this just this desire to experience like profound authenticity, profound truths, you know? What do you I, think? I totally agree. And I think and I don't know if it's just a Scorpio in me, but like I, and I would never say I don't fear a planet. I like to work with planets, but that Plutonian energy that takes you really deep down into something, I think it's healthy. And one of the things that I would look for with this kind of energy is one foresight is better, is amazing. So knowing that you're going to kind of come into this and you may have to touch back on it again is a good note to kind of put in your calendar. But where Pluto is in, in Aquarius right now is like that's an air sign, it's fixed and it's mental. So I think even, You may have some haunting things like haunting ghosts or ideas that kind of flutter back into your mind. And so it could resonate as self-doubt, like, oh, you're not ready. But I think you're more ready than you're giving yourself credit for. No matter like where you are in this life right now, you've got a lot of golden lessons that you can use to kind of launch you forward. But it is very much um, if it comes up. Like, where are you? Are you surrendering your power to it? Because that's what Pluto is going to ask you. He's going to say, where is your power? You know, who are you giving it to? Why are you giving it to them? Are you misusing your power in, in that balance of it? And I think the, what I love about Venus coming into this is that you can, in, in being in Leo, it's heart based. Like, is your heart really in this? Like, was it? And if it's okay, if it's not in it anymore, you know what I mean? We, we change. Everything grows and changes. So maybe your heart was in something at one point. But now you've grown or the situation's changed and your heart is ready for a new chapter. So I love kind of knowing that we're going to get that good glimpse. It's kind of like this, like almost addictive rush of like, oh, that's going to pull me back in. Do I have healthy boundaries in place or should I surrender to it because my boundaries are too thick? Like everyone's story is going to be different. But I've always kind of that that Venus Pluto connection. I like watching that in charts, too, because you really see that power, that passion and that bridge between endings and beginnings and how sacred and beautiful it can be when you surrender to it and sometimes you just you have to it's like a force of nature a force of soul with it but it's scary but it's It's scary scary. it's scary fine you know we can we can paint it my son i can paint it with a lot of pretty words and yeah a great song or a great movie where you get out your little you know you're crying because you feel the emotion but that's what's about being alive is you have to feel to be alive. You have to express yourself. And that's easier for some people than others. And it's definitely easier at certain phases and circumstances than others. But whatever comes up today, I feel like you just kind of dial into the moon, you know, put your feet on the ground, lean into your heart with that Venus thing and take a really good hard look and know that whatever's here is, is not everything's changing. It's a flow and you're going to move with it. And Following your heart, I think, is would be my advice. I feel like that's what you're trying to say. Like, that's your impression, too. Kind of go with the... Yeah, well, the reason I brought the midwives up, because the midwife have... I've noticed a lot of midwives who have that signature. When we talk about birth, like giving birth, it's it's a very scary process, but it's ultimately also a beautiful thing. So there's something where, you know, it's scary, but at the same time, you're you're probably also birthing something new through through those transcending those fears you know 
Yeah, it's definitely. And that's something that I, that I think has come up a lot for me too with client works because I, I always, I remember telling my mom, like, I'm like, are you a mom? Do you remember like when you went the day of the baby? Like you really, I mean, you may have been thinking about the labor and the pains and everything, but you were more so thinking about the other side. Like, you, like it was something bigger than you, something more important. And compelling. Yeah. yeah. And it was there. Like all, like you forget the pain, which is almost like this weird kind of trick the universe gives you. Like, you don't remember that you went through hours or da, 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 da. But it's like that with any birthing, any kind of business or you know, like all the stages of your children or your anything that you're doing, your education, your health. Like there is there's a, a transition and a growth where you have power and you have to trust yourself. And I think that this is a, a beautiful launch, beautiful darkness. I think like <laughs> that's it. Like it's a beautiful swirlwind of change that's coming in. But it's going to redirect your attention to what really matters. And, and so, especially if you've been more outwardly focused than inwardly focused, I think this is going to help you see. Like, Yeah, I love that. I love the point to make. I find that really useful for myself. <laughs> um, it's like, and I like how you said um, it was going to talk, you're going to have like this, you know, awareness of status because sometimes like the question is why, why do you care? Not, not, and then I'm not saying that in a condescending way, like, why do you care? But like, why does your likes or your notifications or the feedback from this individual, like, why does that matter to you? And will it matter in five years? Like that, that might be some of the reality that comes in. Like if you put all of your energy and time into say like a social media platform that disintegrates and like, like imagine like MySpace, I just dated myself like way back. Like that was like one of the original ones. And if you put like your whole life into something like that and then traffic goes somewhere else. But I think if you have that moment of, you know, what is my status? Like why, did, why? Like is your heart in it? Why, did, why does it really matter if you take a step back? But hmm. I feel like the whole week, like we could, it, we're, we're just on Monday, Elodie. Yeah. <laughs> We're going deep. We're going <laughs> deep. I mean, it, <laughs> but, uh, what, what can we do, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, it's it's striking to see as an astrologer when you see this entrance of Venus, glamorous, and then she meets Pluto. It's it's very dramatic. <laughs> it's a beautiful darkness. It's like a the sunset on one side and a storm and whirling winds and beautiful gowns. I could see the artist. I love that. Yeah. So we'll probably definitely be feeling something this powerful as we roll into Tuesday, though, on the 6th. Still kind of working with that energy. Is there anything else that you want to bring in for Tuesday? Uh, well, Tuesday, I, I, I do think, again, I just want to bring in, you know, I always look at the moon because the moon moves really fast, but she brings in a lot of the mood. And, you know, the moon in Capricorn is productive. It's, it's applying to try and Jupiter on Monday, then it will. What does it do on, on Tuesday? It trines Uranus. Then it will trine Mercury. I really like that. I feel like it's pro the progressive implementation of change, but in very tangible ways. So it's, it's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's very flowy. I, I like that. Implementation of change. I love that. Communicating in a very grounded, clear way too. Like you, you feel it, you have to, to name it because when you name it, you disempower it or empower yourself, vice versa. Yeah. So we're on the other side of the, the full moon. So, you know, this, this week and the, the moon is waning, but I think there's a natural sort of progression and change are taking place, but I don't think it's like excessively dramatic. It's earthy. I like earth, pragmatic, you know, yeah, women, <laughs> pragmatic. Love it. Yeah. So those are very earthy words. All right. And so we are going to now, like, then we're midweek. We're on the 7th, which is Wednesday. We do have a moon changing that, that day, mm -hmm. too, but we're still going to feel so Saturn. What, how, when is your biggest focus for Wednesday? Well, interestingly, Wednesday is called Hump Day in English. You guys call it Hump Day. And it is a very dynamic day, <laughs> you know, in general, because the moon entering Aquarius will start aspecting everything that's in Taurus and Venus and Leo and Mars and Leo. So it does create a little bit more of dynamic tension, reconciling different areas of life, things like that. And again, you know, in my notes, I wrote, who or what are you doing this for? And you, you just mentioned that about status on Monday and things like that. I think that comes through again because Venus and Mars and Leo are more interested in their personal goals, but the moon and Aquarius is collective. So it brings this, this sort of tension confronted to our personal goals against the collective landscape. How does your desire fit into the grand scheme of things? You know, 
even if this is going to be less and less important as we progress with Venus and Leo, we might be still kind of like, okay, you know, like, can I really think about myself like that much? Like, is that okay? You know, can I state my desire? Can I ask for what I want? <laughs> There's a bit of that, that tension there. I can definitely sense that. It's almost, and um, I've been, we've, I've been talking about this a lot with Pisces and Saturn. It's like the moment you put, put a boundary in place like you I was like you feel really good okay I'll put that boundary there and then it's the person on the other side or the thing on the other side that starts beating down and you're like like they're knocking on the boundary like why is this there you never put it there before and so you start yeah. to question should it be there and so it is like you get this like almost authority or this awareness on Monday you process it work with it on Tuesday and then Wednesday someone's knocking on the other side you're like I kind of feel a little guilty but should you though, like kind of lean back onto that initial feeling you had, but definitely, um, cause there, there, I think, I don't know that it's, I, I doubt that it will ever be easy, but there is a way to have a healthy boundary and still be aware of others and, and, and caring about them. And sometimes putting that boundary up is a way to care for those other people, because that gives you the way to like, you know, self heal and reflect and connect. So you can be there for that person, place or thing you know, when it is time to be there, because there is a season and time for everything. This is and I think, yeah, and I think with the Leo planets, like we're looking for the most authentic pathways to, and, and we're going to probably care less and less about what other people are thinking. I think a lot of people are moving away from, you know, being overly invested in social media and things like that, because we spend so much time on the internet and really returning to this more embodied experience of reality and be like, okay, I'm in my desire. What is it that I want? And it's out of necessity, more so than anything, it's out of necessity to just be alive, feel our desires. And that's really that Leo vibe. So, but yeah, Wednesday, there's a little bit of tension, but I'm all for this, this kind of dynamic tension because it really helps us situate ourselves in our, in our desires and our goals. Yeah. We always get a test, right? When we put up where we challenge something it's just like when you're in school like you learn something and there's a pop quiz and then you go yeah. to the next you integrate it you integrate the knowledge that way yeah you build and it's okay if we fail the test it's <laughs> course correct but yeah i think that I, I agree with you it's gonna be a pretty dynamic tension moving into that kind of day now how do you feel thursday what is your vibe for thursday uh well the moon is still in aquarius on thursday and it forms a trine with the sun in gemini i love that i love the air trine because it allows for the, a bit of detachment, a bit of innovation coming through. So although everything that's happening in Leo and Taurus is, is very much more like me oriented, I think we have a little moment of clear detachment. We're heading, to, the moon is, is waning. So it, I do, there's a bit of perspective coming through for not taking things too personal, personally. What are the air sign good at? They're good at conceptualizing. So you know, taking a bit of a step back, maybe not being so involved and just being like, okay, what's the terrain here, you know? Yeah, it'll be a little less emotion and more mental approach to it because if you can kind of, because it'll be a little saturating, the emotion will be a little saturating as we start the week, but this will be more like a an emotional process to it. Are there any big transits for that day besides the moon that you want to talk about? Uh, so we're talking about Thursday. Um, well, Venus squares the nodes. Um, <laughs> that's the one you were looking for, yeah. <laughs> what do you want to say about it? <laughs> I was just in, oh, well, of course, I'm interested in what you would think about that transit, but Venus is squaring the North Node, right? So, like that, and it's, we're getting kind of close to wrapping up that Taurus story, and there's so much action there. So, I just wonder if Venus, now that she's like in Leo, how you feel that she'll be talking to that North Node that we've an area that we've been striving for for the last, you know, like almost 18 months, like our, a year and a half. We've been kind of going in that direction. Um, so, what well, be yeah, I personally, you know, I have Venus rules the, the North Node in Taurus. So I do think it's not as confronting as, let's say, another planet that would square the node. Because in evolutionary astrology, I think they call this a skip step. When a planet squared the nose, they say, okay, there's something kind of missing, finalizing here. But because Venus rolls the nose in Taurus, and I do see both Leo and Taurus as being kind of more sensual and anchored in, in their desire, I, 
I don't necessarily see this as a as a square per se. That's my personal opinion. I I feel like if anything, it's 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 productive for what Venus wants at this point. And it's kind of a natural part of the progression of what's been happening in Taurus. Jupiter is in Taurus still. Uranus is in Taurus. Venus rolls over this Taurus thing. It's very sensual. It's very de desire and body oriented. That's how I see it. I agree with you 100%. I just think and I would see, I know sometimes squares kind of um, make some people tense up. I look, I'm just like, I'm like, I'm like, Okay, with Pluto, I'm okay with squares, but that I just like there's a positive. That's there's a positive to every side, but I I see it as an activating energy, like a reminder. Like you've been really trying to go this way, and like what what's there to last? What what are you gonna sit here? What's what are you ready to nurture? And I love that Venus is even if there's some doubt with those boundaries the day before, it's kind of like a a, a reminder. Like no, this is not a new goal that you've had. This is a boundary or a direction you've been going in for a while. And remember it. Remember why. Remember your. I mind. love that. Yeah, good stuff. I yeah. Walk like that in. Skip step or no. It's it's definitely the step that you can take now to make sure you're doing your Venus and Leo. All right. So now we're we're heading towards the weekend. So Friday, the moon enters Pisces in the morning here on the East Coast and forms a sextile with Jupiter all day, which I like. Um again, I think we're we're seeing very progressive, natural progressive energy. Mercury is sextile Neptune also, so we get this kind of extra inspired influence, I guess. I say inspired because Neptune Neptune can be very creative and it's a sextile with Mercury, so it it's like the ability to use just enough information and, and creativity together, but not get lost or dispersed too too much. There's, there's something productive. Um, what I did put is a good mixture of earth and water on, on Friday because the moon's in Pisces, but there's all the storage stuff. I, I repeat. And what does earth and water do? Well, it's intuitive qualities. They're both intuitive, very intuitive, body oriented for Taurus and emotion for Pisces. What I compare this to is feng shui. So feng shui is the art of placing objects in your house so that the energy will flow better. So Taurus is the objects in your house and the energy flowing is the moon in Pisces on Friday. What I see is Friday is this access to emotional and our physical reality and make the necessarily tweak an adjustment, but it's happening in a sort of way that, yeah, it's, it's like, oh, you know, I need to declutter my entrance a little bit, my the pathway, and then money starts flowing into your life. That's a feng shui concept. I see Friday as kind of like that because the moon in Pisces is supporting all the Taurus planet and there's this this nice earth and water balance. Love it. Very nurturing soil. And I love the feng shui because for anything that you do, like if you live with intention, like if you're like, you know, if I do declutter this, I'm opening this up in this space. Like it's a conscious effort that you're making towards this. And once you start kind of doing that, then, you know, natural suggestions and ideas, very sextile kind of energy will start to flow in. So that's a great way to kind of step into the weekend. Like, okay, I'm going to little changes big to lead to big results all over the place. All right, so Saturday. So Saturday is the last quarter moon. So what's the last quarter is when the moon squares the sun. Um, and we're talking about mutable here. So I do think there's two different threads going on because moon in Pisces, sun in Gemini is mutable, flexible, going with the change. It's leaning more towards the Saturn and Pisces story that's happening. And then we have, again, what's happening in the fixed sign, which I think is a little bit different. It's not necessarily the same things. People who have a lot of mutable planets are experiencing, I've noticed in my practice, are experiencing things differently than people who have a lot of fixed energy or carnal. So <laughs> the last quarter moon will not be equal for everybody, I do not think. Um, I think, you know, there is integration and flexibility and an and intuitive letting go in general. But for people who are experiencing Saturn Pisces, people with mutable placement particularly, might be a little bit more challenging or a little bit more anxiety inducing. 
Okay. Now, just for anyone who is new or doesn't know what the mutable signs are, what are those signs or what areas in our chart would you say is experiencing those? Which signs would those be? Pisces, Sagittarius, Virgo, and Gemini. So the last quarter moon really triggers the, you know, more of these placement, I would say. And what I say about mutable sign and squares and this last quarter moon, which is mutable, Pisces, moon and Pisces, square sign and Gemini, it's, it's kind of dispersing and maybe a little bit scattering or anxiety inducing, but more so for people who have um, mutable placement. It's, it's like a transition phase. Like, do, where do I, what do I take? Like, where do I take from this point to that point? And sometimes when you're in those states of mind, like escaping altogether, very Pisces yes. way, it's like, okay, I can't, I don't, I don't I'm know. I'm overwhelmed. What. It's over- overwhelming. I can't deal. <laughs> hey, if you feel that way, like on the weekend, if you need to take a step back, like if something is just like feels so big, just kind of break out of the pattern and go do something else. Go get a nice meal, go on a walk, go bathe in the forest, you know, kind of take in all the positive energy. Yeah, that's a good way to, to process that kind of energy. I like that. And then we have Sunday, the last day before our next forecast. So that seems like a pretty active day. Well, I'm looking at, you know, there's a sequence. So Pluto stations retrograde back into Capricorn after having been in Aquarius for some time. So, you know, that's a big one. Pluto will be in Capricorn until uh, January. So it's retrograding back in Capricorn, finishing up some things here. Almost immediately after Pluto goes back into Capricorn, we have Mercury entering Gemini. But just before that, they form a trine to each other. So there's kind of like a, there's, there might be a a secret, (laughs) something. I don't know how to delineate that. I don't know if you have a, a good idea about this one, but it's, it's really interesting that Mercury, just before Mercury leaves Taurus, it connects with Pluto. And Pluto gives him something. Yeah, it's like a, it's another perspective or like a curious mindset. Or I could just kind of see like, you, you know, Mercury walking out and he kind of like kind of, kind of, you know, tilts his head a little bit and looks at Pluto with a smirk on his face. It's like, you know what? And then he gets it. He had, it's like when you remember the conversation you have and you remember the expression or why someone did something. And there's still like a little bit of an eclipse hint too. Like when we look at these accesses, um, and everything that happens as Pluto moves into Aquarius, like back in March, was on fast forward. So kind of replaying certain things and seeing it from a different angle. Very likely secrets can come up or maybe if you have one that you haven't shared, maybe someone's going to kind of kind of put some, you know, to it. What is it saying? Put two and two together to kind of understand what happened. But then, mm. you know, like, oh, that's what they meant by that. Um but we're, we're wrapping up a pretty big week, though, a pretty big week of like, well, now my entire perspective has changed. I'm going to put me first. I've put boundaries. Boundaries have been tested. You know, all the whole the whole nine yards. And then now you're at this ending point getting into a new story because. And the- I was just going to say uh, Mercury entering Gemini definitely changes things because it's going to start moving. Yeah, things are going to start moving in different direction. We love Mercury and Gemini because it's very efficient here. So, you know, we might get busier. We might literally get busier with Mercury and Gemini because the sun is in Gemini also. So kind of lining up our ducks on Sunday and being like, okay, there's all of these new things now I want to do. Definitely. I think busy, playful, youthful, bouncy. Like it's like if you're even if you're not good at multitasking, suddenly you're going to be good at multitasking. You're going to be able to kind of juggle some things that you need to. But it's also like not taking it so seriously because you're like Mercury and Virgo is like very, you know, like, oh, we have to do this right. If we miss this one thing, it's over, it's done. But Gemini is like, you know what? If we miss that, there's the next train. Like, yes, yeah. we'll have a good time. And you know what? I might make a new friend over there too. So it's def- I like how Mercury kind of, it, it's kind of a, I can just see him just walking with a grin into the next week. Like, let me show you what's up next kind of thing. So I, I like how it ends that way. It begins with a lot of Venus and then Mercury's Mercury's going to go tell all the gossip to the next week. Like, Yeah. And the moon enters uh, Aries too on Sunday. So it's definitely, there's definitely a, a shift, a cardinal shift. Cardinal meaning initiating 
So although we're seeing the last quarter moon, last quarter moon are usually like, oh, things are winding down. Not so sure. <laughs> and we're, yeah. You're definitely ready. I think that's the thing is because I mean, uh, and everyone I think operates differently with the different moon phases of like maybe it's reflective of when you were born, but there is like this, you know, notion, oh, it's the dark of the moon, you know, spend time and reflect. But that's like where that's the, um, like the, the mirroring. Yeah. <laughs> like that's like really yeah. getting it to come. Like it's the conception of the idea. Like it's getting ready. Like the, the curtain comes back with that and we're, we're ready to go forward. But it's just kind of like you have it all and you're ready to, to launch it very soon. But yeah, it's, it's a big week. It's a lot of Venus. Yeah, it's... I didn't realize it was going to be that busy. When I looked at it first, I was like, oh, it looks like quiet. And then the more you go into it, you're like, oh, you're like, wait a minute. There's a story there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let me, I'm going to go through and summarize all of these great points that you had, which is going to be a challenge because you're absolutely brilliant. But we are going to move into a very Venusian week. It's going to be a lot of reflective like me time about me. What do I need to be more self-expressive and authentic? But as we kick off today, right Monday, when we're listening to this forecast, we're going to have that idea. We're going to have this cardinal grounded energy to get started, but then we're going to run into Pluto. So we're going to have some really deep emotions and thoughts and maybe thinking about where we surrender our power and how, um, how we can rebalance that. Like, why, why, why do we care about the opinions that we get? And our, what, where do we give ourselves? How do we grade ourselves against other people? And should that be more internal than external? Because we'll probably be a lot happier if we focus more inwardly. We'll still be working on that on Tuesday. But Tuesday is also going to be a very productive, active day. We still have a very um, a moon that wants to work really hard in Capricorn. Now, Wednesday, we could feel like we're hitting a couple of roadblocks because we put up healthy boundaries. We're like, nope, this is what I'm going to do now for me. So we're going to work as optimistically as we can with those boundaries and know that there is a purpose. Got to take care of me before I can take care of you. And then on Thursday, we might get a reminder of why we're doing this in the first place with Venus talking to the North Node because it's not like it's a new concept that you've been working on. You just now use your voice or your action or your heart to take forward and um, take action. And then Friday, we've got going into the weekend, we have a lot of great nurturing suggestions and ideas. How do we clear space? How do we open up things into our lives, living with intention? And, you know, if we need, if our intention in that moment needs to escape so we can kind of get clarity when we escape from the situation, we totally can. And then as we kind of wrap up the weekend, we could have some secrets that are coming out, a new perspective, a new idea, but we're we were kind of going into the new week charged up with a new idea and a new way to communicate to look at everything. Is, is that how, is there anything you want to add to that summary? Anything you want to throw in for this week? I love that. You're very masterful. I think, oh, well, also, yeah, I want to add something actually. Venus and Leo loves compliments. So if so anything goes wrong, just, <laughs> you just, just pull out the, pull out <laughs> the compliments. Yeah. I love that. Show yourself with compliments. And I love how, like, when you compliment something, almost like this natural, you know, very flow, like, oh, I really like that about you too. Or it kind of, you can really make someone's entire day by just saying one nice thing to people that you see. And I mean, that's, that's really powerful. Maybe that could Absolutely. be Absolutely. Yeah. Let's all compliment each other. Let's all say something beautiful to whoever we see. But um, it has to be true. It has to be authentic. Yeah. But I think you, if yeah. you, find something that you like about something that you come across like there might be some more inner work you know it could be like i just kind of like how you presented that or i like that i don't i didn't that you did that and i didn't have to do that like sometimes it's it a fuel <laughs> it's a fuel yeah yeah it's, absolutely it's so like it i think I, I i wrote this or maybe said this on star signs but venus venus attracts what you like and Jupiter amplifies it. So we're working with a lot of Venus, Jupiter, Taurus energy, and we want to attract, we want, so this authentic from the heart. I really like that about yeah. the you. It's going to attract music. Be like, well, let me, let me give you some more things that you like. If we like this, here you go. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think we figured it out. <laughs> it. Yeah. We're going to be, <laughs> we got <laughs> so much fun, Elodie. Thank now, you. Elodie, I love being a colleague with you on the Astrologer Connect platform, and I want to make sure that everyone knows how to find you. I have personally had a reading with Elodie, and I mean, she is amazing. All the detail, all the you know perspective that she brings in, and she's like very, I, you just feel like, no, I, 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 
I love that you can see that about me without me having to express that. And that says a lot for someone who reads their chart all the time or is always working at charts to have a perspective come in so pure and so honest and clear the way that Elodie does readings. I highly recommend it. If you want to find Elodie and book with her directly, all you need to do is go to astrologyhub.com forward slash Elodie Connect. I promise you will not regret it. Now you can check out the entire platform, all the astrologers that we have at astrologyhub.com forward slash connect. And um, yeah, I'm simply loving it. I hope that you're like, you're loving it. Are you having a blast? I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's been amazing. And the team is great. And yeah, it's been a beautiful experience. I met so many cool people. You know, it's, I love yeah. how you kind of attract those clients. Like you're in the perfect space and they're in the perfect space. And, and I, and that's something that I know that you and I both love doing. And I've seen you do, you've been able to do it a little bit more than me recently, but the, it's the instant, instant Absolutely. insight. Yeah. Like, like they see you, like you're working and your light is on. Like if you're like, I have a question, I'm trying to figure out how to get through this. It could be anything like work related, whatever. It's like, I need just a little bit of insight. Is this the right timing for me to do that? Like you're ready to hit send and you're like, oh, I'm not sure. Um, but that's, that's a great way to, to connect with an astrologer instantly. And I love seeing Elodie on there. Like I'm tempted to call her sometimes, but you could, if you haven't uh, checked out the instant insights or the book readings, I can't stress enough how fun it is for us and for you guys and to connect with everyone. And share the beauty of astrology. But thank you so much for all the time you spend on this instance, Elodie. I love thank seeing you. Thank you for your wisdom, too. I loved your insight. You're brilliant. So are you, love. So are you. And I want to thank every one of you for tuning in and being, being part of this community. And of course, as always, for making astrology a part of your life. We can't wait to catch you on the next episode. See you then. <laughs>